food not only affects you physically but also mentally yeah. your emotions like it's your fuel source and if you're putting the wrong fuel into a car it's not going to run properly yeah. and food is exactly the same with us anytime we see someone kind of go through something for the for a bigger purpose that yeah. we, we kind of appreciate that as a, as a society because I guess a lot of people who say to me I could never do that I can't believe you did that yeah but I guess uh, I always knew that if we if, it, if we did get it right it actually helped millions of people when you're really reaching out and helping a fellow human being you can't measure that happiness yeah. This is a very special edition of the show because we're live in London. Literally, very live. <laughs> very, live very live. On the street corner, as real <laughs> as it comes, okay? So our guest today is an author, director and actor of That Sugar Book and That Sugar Film, which is the highest grossing Australian documentary of all time. Mm -hmm. So I'm really looking forward to this. So please welcome Damon Gammo. <laughs> Hello, thank you. <laughs> um, get straight into it, Damon. Um, 40 tablespoons of sugar. Teaspoons. Teaspoons. Yeah, well, for well, teaspoons. Yeah, yeah. Over 60 days, mm -hmm. eating nothing but perceivably healthy foods. Yeah. Oh, what was your, why did you do it? Well, I think we kind of all understand that, you know, if we have too much sugar, like it's not good for us. If we have like Coca Cola and donuts and chocolate, we're going to get sick, you know. But I was walking down a supermarket and I picked up a can of tomato soup and I saw that it had eight teaspoons of sugar in it. And I thought, I don't reckon many people would know that there's that much sugar in this kind of healthy, savory kind of meal. Yeah. And I guess I spent the next couple of hours just looking around the supermarket, reading labels, and realizing just how much sugar is in food that we eat. In fact, it's now in 80% of the food supply. So I kind of thought, I wonder if I could eat what the average Australian eats a day, which is about 40 teaspoons a day, but do it without touching any soft drink or chocolate or ice cream or lollies. Yeah. Only these perceived healthy foods. So that's really how it started. Didn't know what we were going to get. So, you know, we might have had, you know, might have done nothing to my body, but um, I think the film's kind of done as well as it has because, you know, yeah, I, I developed all the same symptoms that we're seeing more and more yeah. in, in society. The, the crazy thing is, that must be the common diet for a lot of people. A lot of people yeah. must have 40 tablespoons of sugar with what they think is healthy food. That's right. Um, so there must be other people getting the same conditions as what what you exactly. experience. Exactly. And I think um, you know if you look now at even you know the state of health around the, around the planet, it's pretty diabolical. Yeah. It can't get much worse. And you know we're seeing kids with type 2 diabetes, kids with fatty liver disease. I mean these things were unheard of in children like 20 years ago. Yeah. But you know it's, we just need to understand, that especially these sugary drinks, whether it's a iced tea or a sports drink or a um, soft drink, they all behave in a very unique way in our body and they turn to fat very quickly in the liver yeah. and that's what happened to me, I got fatty liver disease just in 18 days of eating these foods. Unbelievable. And then and that fat goes out into your bloodstream and then that's what causes the complications for these other diseases we're seeing. What was the positive of getting fatty liver disease? <laughs> I don't know that there is a positive. Yeah, I, I, I heard that you, the documentary was, it started on quite a low budget yeah. and they oh, realised you got yeah. really ill yeah. <laughs> and they thought yes. That's right. Well, that was probably the big turning point is yeah. that we didn't know what um, was going to happen to my body. But once I did get those, that diagnosis here, yeah, I rang the producer and told him that I had fatty liver disease and he was like, yeah, that's great. Because now we had a film. You yeah, know? yeah. Like before that, yeah. we didn't know whether we had a story or not. Yeah. Uh, I love the film because it's really unique and it's accessible for children and adults. Mm. And I think it's on day 14 you do a... A sugar comparison day, yeah. is that right? Yep. What, 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 what did you do for that and what was that like? Well, yeah, I mean, that was probably a pretty tough day to do, but I think what it, the point of it was to try to really show people how much sugar they're having. So I basically eat 40 actual teaspoons of sugar, so the real sugar. Instead of it being hidden in the, in the foods, yeah. I eat the real, real sugar. Oh, right. And I think what people need to realise is, you know, I start the day with a, you know, a just right healthy breakfast. There's low fat yogurt, peach flavoured, and there's a glass of apple juice. And yeah. that's 20 teaspoons of sugar to start the day. Already. You know? So I actually ate that sugar for real, yeah. just to show people you'd never do that. Yeah. if it wasn't hidden in the food but because it's dressed up in this lovely packet and there's a bee and some flowers and it's all looking very healthy we kind of don't think that there might be sugar in it but these products have as much if not more, more. sugar in them yeah. than the junk foods yeah it's oh, why is that well there's why a couple of reasons that um mainly that uh you know once we started this whole low fat craze in the 70s which you know even now there's more and more science coming out saying that look we need to be eating these fats, these healthy fats, these avocados and nuts and whatnot. But we kind of demonized all these fats. So the companies, to replace the flavor and the mouthfeel of the product, they ended up just cramming them with sugar. 
And then what happens also is that we have this very, um, a part of our brain called a mesolimbic pathway, which is very receptive to sugar. So it's a very primal desire. Yeah. It happened when we were evolving, you know, sugar, fruit was very rare in nature, honey was very rare. So when we saw it, our, our brains just lit up and said, get it, you know, because you might not come across is it that the, Is that the same part of the brain that lights up when with nicotine? Yeah, it's a reward center in yeah. our brain. So they're kind of opioids that make us feel good when we have it. So the problem is that that's great when you've got you know, you, you only come across fruit very rarely in the wild, but now, given that sugar's everywhere, yeah. we just kind of can't, it's very hard to slow down, and the companies kind of understand this, so it's this kind of uh, complicated system where they know if they put more sugar in their products, it'll sell more because yeah. we've got used to it, plus it affects your palate, so a lot of people find that if they, um, you know, you eat sweet foods a lot, you, want, you need a food to be sweet Come to actually here, enjoy it, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And when you start to lower it again, yeah. your palate readjusts, so you actually start noticing the subtle flavors of food again, yeah. even a banana sweet, yeah. you know, which you don't notice when you're having cans of Coke every day. Well, yeah. I love the, um, there was a term in your, in your film and someone called fruit, nature's dessert. That's it. And I thought that was a really nice yeah, way to put it. That's it, it. Like, nature's dessert. That's right, it's, it's fantastic. That's what it's for. It's supposed yeah. to be this treat that we have, but yeah. Unfortunately, you know, people aren't eating enough fruit. They're eating, they're getting their sugar from their refined sources. There's a lot of sugar in, in products like Coke. There's a heck of a lot of sugar. Um, why is, why do they put that much sugar in? What's the, what, what's the research and the science? Because I know there's something called the bliss point. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the, what's the reasoning behind that? So, um, aeroplane. This, uh, this happened in uh, the late '70s. There's a guy named Howard Moskovitz, who's quite a famous sort of food technologist. And he discovered that people had an individual bliss point for sugar. And what that means is that some people will have two sugars in their cup of tea and be fine. But if you yeah. put three in, they'll be like, nah, it's too much. Yeah. Someone else only has one in their sugar. So we've all got a different bliss point. So the companies realized this. So what they did is went around and tested all the different foods, whether it's pasta sauces and um, bread, yeah. soda. And they kind of really formulate to get that perfect amount of sugar that'll get most people going, oh, that's delicious. It's not too sweet, but it's really nice. And yeah. the guy spent some time at a research center in Philadelphia too, where they would literally line up 20 kids and have them all eating this vanilla pudding. And all the pudding had different levels of sweetness in it, but they just wanted to monitor which kids liked it, which yeah. ones didn't. So they got the perfect formula and then they make more money. What's your bliss point? <laughs> well, my, it's funny because your palate does adjust. My bliss point, before I'd made this film, like before I met my girlfriend, I was a massive sweet tooth, like a couple of vanilla Cokes a day, like Mars bar in the afternoon, loved it. So my bliss point was super high and I actually had it tested. Yeah. And since I've done the film and I don't sort of have much sugar anymore, it's incredible how it changes. So I can't tolerate, even a sip of Coke to me now is like too much battery acid. I just find it so yeah, yeah. strong. Whereas I had it every day of my life. Yeah, you know? it's, it's interesting because people, they, they say they enjoy what they're, they're eating already and they don't need to come off it because yeah. it's what they've always had. But if they did come off it, as you said, their palate would adjust. That's right. And even one tablespoon of sugar would seem appear sweet after a week if you were used to having three or four tablespoons that's right. of sugar. And that's the point too, is that that's a healthy, if we were all just kind of eating pretty good foods and every now and again we had a sugary treat, yeah. great, that's yeah. fine. We've just flipped it. So we're having sugar all the time and then occasionally having a vegetable, but they taste so bland because we've kind of nuked our palate with all this yeah. sugary stuff. So we've just got to find a way to flip that around. It's not about quitting sugar or demonizing it and saying you can't ever have sugar. It's like, let's just be smart about how much we're having. When you're on your, when you're on your journey doing, doing the film, what was the most shocking, because I know you went to a lot of different places, like you went to see um, the Aborigine people mm -hmm. and there was some shocking stuff that you found mm -hmm. um, with that. What was the most shocking thing that you come across? Oh, I think probably the, 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 the bit that got me the most was the fact of you know, how um, ignorant people are to what goes on in the food industry and you know, even some of the tactics that you know, even we're seeing now, so regularly some of these big companies are getting found out of paying dietitians, paying yeah. uh, scientists to kind of put this message out that it's all okay, it's fine. And these are the tactics that tobacco did for 30 years. Yeah. And, and, and that's what helped people to start to kind of change their ways around smoking is understanding that they were being played a bit. Okay. And I think the food industry uh, often follow a very similar playbook of what to do and they know the tactics very well. So that to me was pretty shocking, especially when you, you think what's happening to kids now and how yeah. sick they're getting. You sort of just trust things. You tr when something says organic or it's got a tree on the front, you just yeah. trust it, don't you? Exactly. Inherently, so. And that's where we need the government to help yeah. to sort of make these companies more accountable of what they can put on their label. So if something's got you know, heaps of sugar in it, you shouldn't be able to you know, say yeah. nature's bounty, organic, yeah. healthy, because yeah. most people kind of believe that label. They don't actually turn it around and read for themselves. Yeah. 
they're too trusting and that trust been broken what was two questions what was uh, in the end of the film what was your your, your health like mm -hmm. and how quickly did it take to to get to how you, where you are now. Well, that was probably the, the, the biggest shock and surprise of the film, which we never thought was going to happen. The film originally was going to end once I'd got really sick and I had like pre-type 2 diabetes, heart disease risk, I put on eight and a half kilos, 11 centimetres around my belly. Like, you know, it was a yeah. bit of a you'd train never, wreck. You'd never think it now. <laughs> no, you? Never well, no, it. and then what happened is that we, I started editing the film and writing the book and just from going back to my normal diet and like drinking water again and kind of eating real foods, like not having that processed food, everything turned around in 60 days. So my type 2 diabetes, the fatty liver disease, I had full-blown fatty liver disease, reversed completely wow. in 60 days. I can't believe you did that to yourself. Yeah, well, well I wouldn't do it again. If I no. know what I know now, yeah, there's yeah. no way I would have made this yeah. film. But I guess that that's the great take-home message, that people, kids especially, need to understand that food is so powerful. Yeah. You know, I think we've got into this belief that you can eat what you like, maybe you'll take a tablet later in life, you can do a bit of exercise and you'll be yeah. fine. And it's just, we've got to switch that around yeah. and go that, you know, food not only affects you physically, but also mentally, yeah. your emotions, like it's your fuel source. And if you're putting the wrong fuel into a car, it's not going to run properly. Yeah. And food is exactly the same with us. There's a, there's a point I'm really passionate about, and that is children. Yeah. And so you, you mentioned earlier on about the breakfast you had could contain mm. up to, I think it was, was it 20? Mm. 20 tablespoons of sugar. Mm. Um, if a child is having that before he's going to school, having his cocoa pops, his cornflakes, whatever yeah. he's eating, yeah. with a bit of apple juice. I had some apple juice yesterday and I thought, I, I checked so it out, sweet. knowing, yeah. yeah, and it was just ridiculous. Yep. Um, what is that going to do to the kid at school? And how do we mm. get change people's perceptions around this, that children are not eating the, the rubbish? Well, the key factor, especially for kids who are very sensitive, is that there's a term called reactive hyperglycemia. What it means is that you have these kind of sugary foods without the kind of the fibre or the healthy fats and it spikes this hormone called insulin in your body. And because it happens so quickly, um, the insulin clears the sugar out of the bloodstream super fast. And your brain almost panics because it thinks it hasn't got a fuel supply anymore. Yeah. It kind of goes, ah! So it releases these chemicals that can make you feel nervous and jittery. It's like a fight or flight response okay. because it needs to get fuel source. Yeah. So what that means is kids can be in class and be restless. I mean, the amount of teachers that write to me and go, thank you for your film, because we see these kids that are having these breakfasts and the parents then drop them off at school. Yeah. But the teachers have to deal with them deal half with, an hour later them, when yeah. they're kind of going, yeah. where's my next thing? Yeah. So I guess it's about re-educating and putting yeah. back in those kind of proteins, healthy fats, you know, eggs are fantastic. You know, yeah. these slow releasing foods that are more constant. You know, and that goes the same for society. People that are working in offices to avoid those mid-afternoon slumps yeah. where everyone's calm down after lunch. Yeah. You start eating foods that are more consistent. They're not refined carbohydrates like yeah. sugars and pastries and white bread. And it's just giving you this roller coaster. Just thinking ride. where I work now, nearly every day there's packets of biscuits on the That's it. in the offices, on the tables, it, and yeah. it, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, but, but it, it's changed. You know, people are, are waking up to this stuff. And I was saying before, you know, the fact that these elite sporting clubs now, the All Blacks, have just come out and said they yeah, love the freedom and they've. They've got rid of sugar now and they're snacking on nuts instead of lollies. We're seeing the Australian cricket team have done it. The LA Lakers, the basketball team, yeah. aren't doing having sugar anymore. So it's happening. You yeah, know, like we're, we're at the start of this really interesting time. And probably, you know, we had went through the same thing with tobacco 30 years ago. Yeah. And we had people going, ah, oh, it's all rubbish. Like, ah. Fair enough. You know, yeah. we had doctors smoking, for God's yeah. sake. And <laughs> yeah. we look at it now and laugh. Yeah, we'll course. probably get to a point in the next 10 years and go, wow, we had athletes kind of endorsing sports drinks yeah. and, you know, Beyonce selling Pepsi. It's yeah. like, oh, yeah. gee whiz. Did that really happen? Yeah, did that happen? Yeah. And um, we, 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 we'll travel a long way. Uh, what was, so I know that Jamie Oliver's really into his, mm -hmm. he's got a sugar um, initiative at the moment, hasn't yep. he, in, in the UK. Are you doing any work with him and how's that looking? Yeah, like he's been a great supporter of us with the film. He, he watched it uh, before anyone else had seen it and okay. he gave us this great quote that was just like absolute must see kind of, which really helped us to get it out there and, and be seen. And, you know, he's very proactive. He often writes, you know, with our, comes onto our Facebook page and kind of has conversations and um, yeah. we're sort of discussing ways to move forward together at the moment. Because yeah. it is really, it's about joining forces. It's yeah, the, getting the, the message. The food industry is a, a huge beast and yeah. they're very protective of their, of their money. Yeah. And so we've just got to find ways to actually all come together and, and kind of, for the sake of children, yeah. kind of go, you know, we can't keep marketing the kids. We can't have these kind of massive companies going in at a very young level yeah. and telling kids that this stuff's good for them because yeah. then they associate it with sport, exercise, it's just, you know, it's not the way to go. No. And what's the future hold? Where do you want to take this in maybe five years or, <laughs> or even, even off the sugar? The sugar yeah, book yeah. and the sugar film. Where where do you want to go? Well, I mean, it's it's because it's sort of I guess it's overwhelmed everyone in terms of the response to the film. That 
Uh, I guess there are so many things now up and running that I never would have imagined were possible in terms of the school programs or the stuff with Jamie and there's, we've done an app and there's a, a, you know, a foundation for the Aboriginal community. So there's so many things that are just, you know, they're not going to stop in a hurry because they're, yeah. they're sort of gathering momentum. So I guess one part of my brain will try and oversee that for a long time. Okay. And then I, I am excited about, I've got other ideas yeah. um, for films as a filmmaker that I want to make that have got nothing to do with food, okay. <laughs> which I'm pretty excited about. Yeah. So I've just sort of started um, working on a couple of those and, and just sort of, I'm quite excited to, to step oh, away from cool. it. I just had the thought, when you were making the, the, that sugar film, mm. as an actor and a director and everything that you do, you want to be performing at your best, don't you? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, saturating yeah, you're your body with so yeah. much sugar, yeah. you, I mean, it was, it was almost like it was the experiment you were doing it for, but you couldn't have been... No, it's, uh, you know, the, the producers were really, really worried about that because literally yeah. it was me and one cameraman yeah. and we did like 11 states of America in 17 days and it was just oh. like this crazy, and I was eating this crap food yeah. the whole time. So they were, I think it kind of helped in a way because people can see when they watch the film, they go, he looks completely different to what he did six weeks ago. Yeah. You know, whether it's the spark in your eyes or your skin or you just your weight, like I, it was very obvious that I deteriorated. So that kind of helped. But yeah, it was really tricky, and especially when it came to editing. You know, you're looking at yourself yeah. going, yeah. you know, I'm normally as an actor, you're kind of like, yeah. oh, I hope I look okay. And, yeah. and this one, it's like, there's my gut hanging out. Yeah, I yeah. Like, but I knew, you know, it wasn't about me. It was about yeah. the message getting out there. And if, yeah. if it meant that I suffered, then so be it. Yeah, you had to put yourself on the line. You had to become yeah. very vulnerable for that period of time. <laughs> That's right. um, I think when people are vulnerable like that for a good cause, they, they do see big results as well. Yeah, it's a good point. Oh, I hadn't really thought of that. But yeah, you're right. I think any time we see someone kind of go through something for the for a bigger purpose that yeah. we, we kind of appreciate that as a, as a society because I guess a lot of people who say to me I could never do that I can't believe you did that yeah but I guess uh, I always knew that if we if, it, if we did get it right it actually helped millions of people yeah. you know and so the fact that you know kids write to us every day it's you know that means the world to me it's that you know it was worth it all yeah and the bonus is that I, I got healthy again it wasn't like it was permanent damage and I think yeah. that's what people out there need to understand is that even if you're on some medication now and you've got type 2 diabetes so this stuff is reversible yeah like you know it depends how far you are down the line yeah. but for most people you just start eating well again and your symptoms will drastically change so you've been really successful and I want to know slightly off now this is what I like to call the bonus round the bonus round yeah, yeah. <laughs> What, what is your what do you see success as what is your definition of, definition of success? Um, well I probably would say you know even through this experience success is is feeling that you are contributing something I reckon from your own heart and your own story and especially being an actor for so long you're telling other people's stories okay. and I always never felt satisfied by that so to now make something that's from me that I believe in and I'm passionate about and then to see it helping I mean that's worth yeah. any money that's priceless yeah, you know priceless. like it's um and I think that's something to get through to kids too, that I think we're in a society now that says happiness comes when you're earning the most money, you're kicking the winning goal, all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, you know, that stuff is nice, yeah. but when you're really reaching out and helping a fellow human being, you can't measure that happiness. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. You've just given me the thought as well. You, you use the analogy in the book that sugar is, it sort of represents modern day society. It's a quick hit, a quick yeah. fix, a quick buzz. People want to make a quick buck. They, they want everything quickly, like it's like an instant gratification that's now. Right. Yeah. And I, I, that really sort of, I thought, yeah, that's yeah, really true. Yeah, I mean, there's a great, um, you know, even this notion that it's a fast impact. It's a short-term reward, but it's a long-term tragedy. So yeah. it's like our culture now, you know, yeah. like it's, you know, people go on, like, all our movies are explosions and flesh, it's all quick like yeah. that, but there's no kind of depth to depth. it. And we're kind of yeah. skimming along the surface. And sugar is like that, you know, you, it does make you feel good but then you crash Crashed. and you need more to get back up again. Whereas if you can start to sort of change your perspective on things and eat foods that are slow, you can actually have sustained happiness. You might not get the highs and the lows, yeah. but you'll just get a consistent feeling of, hey man, this is good, this is life and I'm relaxed and I'm enjoying it. Yeah. As opposed to, oh, it's great. Yeah. That's a bit shit. Bit it's shit, great. Yeah. <laughs> Ups and downs. Yeah, that's it. Um, and especially for sports people, you know, like, yeah, that's a really interesting thing. I think this whole topic around your mental clarity, you know, it's not just about the physical stuff, but for yeah. you to concentrate and be kind of focused and read the game well and stuff, you know, there's a reason yeah. these elite teams are yeah. now cutting back on sugar because they want to be sharp, yeah. you know, and I know golfers for years haven't touched sugar because they want to be yeah. crystal clear in their thinking and I, the same goes for your sport. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a very famous Premier League striker and he mm. says that he's always more mentally fatigued than he is physically fatigued when he comes off the, yeah, off the pitch. Right. So your diet and what you eat, it's going to be absolutely it's it and, and there's, what's exciting is the next 10 years there's so many studies now being done you know there's a very famous the lancet journal recently said that we need to look consider that sugar or food and mental health 
is just as important as food and physical symptoms. Yeah. So that's the next wave. We're kind of dealing with the obesity stuff now, yeah. but this whole area around how sharp and focused you are, that's the next phase. Yeah, you know? definitely, definitely. Very finally, two, mm. two points. Mm. First one being, you've, been, you, you've done really well with, with this, and I often ask people that I'm, I'm with, what sort of advice can you give for other people to take into mm. their, their life or their business to help them be successful? Not necessarily, obviously it's gonna be food and nutrition, yeah. but is there any other things that you do in your life to, to get to where you've got to? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I, I battled for a long time to get out of my own way. Like, I think yeah. I sort of, I, I only made this first film when I'm nearly 40 because I kind of didn't believe myself. I thought I was really petrified about, you know, saying my truth or putting myself on the line. And so, so that took me a long time and I guess it's important for people to understand that those thoughts you have, those limiting, they're not real. Like yeah. you, you think they are so real and strong and it, yeah. but it actually doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, and I, I made a film uh, before this that won this big award and I got so much grief for it and people would tweet me and I got all this abuse. It was my worst nightmare in a way because yeah. that's what I'd feared. But even when it happened to me, I was like, oh, that's okay. Yeah. Like, it's no big it's deal. Not so bad. Let's just get on with it now. Yeah. You know, and I think uh, a lot of kids too in this increasing world, you've got so much exposure, information, and judgment, and people are always that it's hard to cut through that stuff sometimes. Yeah. And go, you know what? That's just a really thin layer, and it's actually not as significant as you think it is. Definitely. Stand in your own power. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to. One of my biggest fears is dying with regrets. That's it. And you don't want to have any no, regrets. Man. No. And that's so. what. Actually, I was in the hospital with these three eighty-year-olds um, before I made this film, and had an amazing week with them, like, it was this really surreal experience. But I actually sat up one night in bed <coughs> and wrote a letter to myself as an 80 year old and said, Am I, would I be happy sitting in this bed now with these people? How I achieve exactly. the things I want to do? Yeah. Did I have the courage to do it? And I was like, right, I gotta get going. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. Like, yeah. Let's, yeah. let's get out of yeah. this bed and start yeah. doing things. Yeah. So um, I think That's it's important for people, for people to get that perspective. Okay, brilliant. And is there any final piece of advice you suggest to people that want to shape up in their health and, and, and yeah, I guess, sugar. you know, for the sugar thing, the simple thing to remember is that um, when you, like, start to read labels, like, okay. if you are, you know, yeah. turn that label around yeah. and know that one teaspoon of sugar is four grams. So if you see a label that says 20 grams of sugar, yeah. divide it by four okay. to get five teaspoons. So you know yeah. there's five, and you go, would I put that in my cup of tea? Probably not. Yeah. Why am I going to drink it now? I think my mum, she'd probably not appreciate me saying this, <laughs> used to have seven sugars Mom. in her tea. Seven. Seven sugars. How's that for a bliss point? Yeah. That's a serious bliss yeah. point. Yeah, that's it. Everyone's different. But yeah. um, I guess to our parents' generation, they probably didn't have as many processed foods with the sugar in it. So yeah, true. you could have a bit in your tea yeah. and that might be the only sugar you have in a day. Maybe another thing at the end of the day. But now it's like people, the fact that I had 20 teaspoons at breakfast yeah, yeah, that's... in a healthy meal. Yeah. If I then have a chocolate for dessert, suddenly you're getting up to 30, 35 yeah. and that's what, you know, that's why we're all going through what we are. Yeah. But, and where can we find out more about you? Because there's a lot of stuff to do with the schools yep. um, and also to follow you as well. So it's all on our website, that's yeah. sugarfilm.com and there's, okay. you'll see there's links to the school section and different, there's lots of recipes, there's tips and advice. Um, there's also the book, obviously, but then I'm also like Twitter and you're going to do a shameless plug. <laughs> you can't get the book. Look at it, you can almost <laughs> eat the book. <laughs> so <laughs> Scratch and sniff. Yeah. And uh, Twitter and Instagram and Facebook page is actually a really good place for people to come. Lots of people share their experiences and it's become a bit of a community space where people can talk and discuss different topics and they give each other advice. So yeah, it's worth it. Perfect. Damon, been a pleasure. Thank you. Absolutely. Cheers.